Welcome to the tip channel. That is perfection. This is chapter two. This is your first appointment with a client. You're going out to measure. Now, they say that you only get one chance to make a first impression. So I come from a generation that, yes, I get dressed up, I put on a tie, I'm respectful going out there. I'm gonna show up with a briefcase in hand. Uh, naturally my own ruler. Um, a couple of things. It has become a much more informal world, but take the time to get cleaned up and present yourself as a professional. In regards to the time frame, very, very important. Show up on time. Rule of thumb is if you're going to be more than 15 minutes late, call or text and let them know that you are on your way, but you're going to arrive at X amount of time. People hate waiting on people. They even hate more being stood up. Anyway, um, wear a pair of shoes. It's very easy to slip off when you show up at the front door. You want to uh, start to take your shoes off. Now you may get the response, no, no, that's not necessary. Your response should be, oh, I don't mind. Uh, if they continue to insist that for you to leave your shoes on, then do so. But most people find it very disrespectful to show up and just walk right in with your shoes on. Okay, so now we're in the house and I normally start the conversation like this. Now I'd like to start by asking a couple of questions. This, this has nothing to do with pricing of appliances, but just so that I can lay them out on your plan. Are you planning to use a single or a double bowl sink? If they reply single bowl, keeping in mind that a lot of ladies are going to single bowls now because of the dishwasher, but they're wanting that big single bowl. That's as big as what a double bowl sink is. So you want to find that out if you're uh, going to lay that out in your plan. Next question is dishwasher. Most people do. Uh, my third question is normally trash compactor. Now, a lot of times you will get a response from the client. Well, Dawn, do a lot of people do trash compactors? My response is people that have had them typically don't like them because they don't like the smell of weak old garbage in their kitchen. Uh, but trash can pullouts are becoming very popular. Uh, if they say, yeah, I'd like to have a trash can pullout, ask them, do you want just a single trash can pullout or do you want a double trash can pullout? If they ask why double, say because a lot of municipalities now require that you do recyclables. So you have one for trash, you have one for recyclables. Um, also, then my next question is going to be about the range. Now, are you going to use a complete range or a cooktop and a wall oven? I do use my hands for that so that they understand what I'm talking about in regards to the range. What about your microwave? Are you planning a microwave setting on a countertop? Do you want a microwave wall cabinet for a microwave? Do you want the microwave above the range with the fan and light underneath of it? Or do you want a microwave drawer? Now, when you mention microwave drawer, it might have that puzzled look on their face. They think they gotta get down on their hands and knees to actually look at the microwave. That isn't the case. With the microwave drawer, you simply hit a button, it pops out, right there's your product. So a lot of ladies prefer that. It's become very popular because instead of reaching over top of the range and trying to take a hot product out, it's right there. So very easily accessible. Also, it shows them that you know product. So again, what you're doing is you're building up, building up, building up uh, to give them the feeling of confidence that you are the person for their job. You want to ask them about granite countertops. You want granite or do you want laminate? If they ask about granite, well, Dawn, how much is the granite countertop? Now, here's where you want to educate them a little bit and say basically for a granite countertop, we're looking at about five to six grand for a normal size kitchen on up from there, depending upon the color of granite that you choose and the edge treatment. My next question after that is, do you have an idea as to how you would like to have the kitchen laid out? Now, Here's where I've won a lot of kitchens. I will have a lady come in and look at the design and she says, you know what, Dawn? You were the first person to pay attention to what I said, what I wanted. So 
keeping in mind you may have a better idea for their kitchen than what they do but you want to show them you, their plan first then show them your alternative and why your alternative works a little better never ever slap a person in the face and say oh no you don't want that you want to listen to the lady she knows what she is after a lot of times you will sell her plan because it's her idea so keep that in mind okay so basically at this point they told you what you want and what have you and what i normally do at this point is that i ask the client now before i start to measure do you have any other questions what this is signaling to them is you don't want to have a conversation while you're measuring while you're measuring you want to be undisturbed so that everything that you do in regards to measurement is correct now when you're measuring a kitchen you want to look at everything okay you want to be that person that takes it a step further than what the last guy was that just showed up in their kitchen you want to measure from the corner to the window trim you want to window want to measure from one side of the window trim to the other side of the window trim look at what the height of the window is off of the floor measure from the corner to a doorway trim across the doorway if the kitchen has a bulkhead in, you want to measure that height of the bulkhead off of the floor. You want to measure how deep that bulkhead is. If it doesn't have a bulkhead, you want to measure what the ceiling height is in the kitchen. You should measure the ceiling height anyways. It may end up back at the planning um, design and the people say, you know, I'm thinking about tearing out the bulkhead and going with taller cabinets. Is that an option for us? You know what that ceiling height already is, so you know what cabinets are going to fit. You want to take a look at where the registers are in the kitchen. Now, keeping in mind that base cabinets have five inches of dead space underneath down in the toe kick area. So even if there's a register there, you can plan cabinets across there. You just simply bring the ductwork right out to the face of the toe kick. So these are very important things to pick up on. Take your time to look underneath of the sink, see what's going to be involved in the plumbing. Again, there might be old cast iron pipe in there. You don't really know unless you look underneath of there how involving it's going to be. Uh, take a measurement to the placement of the range. Uh, I also go further nowadays. Naturally, I've got my iPhone with me. I snap a couple of pictures of the kitchen area. Many times you get back and you think, oh man, how was that out there? Yada, yada, yada. You can refer back to the photographs. So that helps a lot. But you want to be as thorough as possible. Not only now you want to ask them, do you have a door style color that you have in mind? Uh, and uh, have you been looking at any cabinets so far? If they say yes, I've been shopping at the lumber yard, yada, yada, yada. I ask them, what line of cabinet were you looking at? The reason for asking that is that now between the time that you measure and the time you get together with the plans, take the time to research the cabinets that they're looking at. Now you will be able to educate them and say, here's what the cabinets at the lumber yard have. Here's the cabinets that I'm offering so that instead of comparing apples to oranges, they now know the difference between the two. Um, also, very last question that's difficult to ask a client and difficult for them to answer is what do you have in mind for a budget for the kitchen? Now, not including appliances or flooring, what I'm flooring, what I'm talking about is for the cabinets, the countertop, and the installation of the kitchen. And if they say, well, yeah, I really don't know, well, say, I can design a kitchen for as little as seven, eight thousand. I can take you clear up to twenty-five, thirty thousand. Most of the time you'll get the reaction, whoa, we don't want to be twenty-five, thirty thousand. At that point, they'll normally ask answer you and give you an idea as to what they're looking at. So in conclusion of chapter two. You've got everything all measured, you've answered all of their questions, and now you're ready to leave. The very last thing you should do is to hand the client your business card. Now your business card is important. Again, it's one more step of being professional. Uh, my business card has a kitchen picture on both the front and the back of it. So it's also a conversation piece. People have a tendency to uh, look at your card whenever you hand it to them. 
Uh, they may say, wow, nice looking kitchen. You can say, yeah, I did that for uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jones up in Grindstone. So again, it gives you one more degree of professionalism. On your business card, you want your name, you want your phone number, you want your company name, you want your email address, any contact information that you may have. If you have a website, have it listed on your card. Uh, basically, it's giving them something that in the meantime, they may check uh, out things with you. Now, in between of designing the kitchen, take two. Now, in between of measuring and actually starting the design for your kitchen, uh, a couple things that you'd want to do if the manufacturer of the cabinets that you're handling uh, has some literature online, what I typically do is I download that literature and I send that to the client. Today's client is a much more educated customer. They like to take the time to research and what have you. If they're going to spend 15, 20 grand on the kitchen, they're not going to do it lightly. They're going to be educated and know what they're actually looking for. So if you can send them some information, if you have some kitchens with a door style that you've done, again, that adds a little more uh, validity to you, uh, send them that picture and say, hey, here's the door style you were looking at. Just want to give you a view of it. Things like that. That's just the next step before the actual designing and presentation. That concludes chapter two. Please proceed on to chapter three. And if you're finding this informative, please like and subscribe and have a great day.